that I think is the most important message is a message about, about what it is to, to be um, a teen in America who also on top of it has to deal with other worlds. And those other worlds might be other worlds culturally. Like, you know, you feeling like you have to be two different people when you're with your parents and when you're at school, but it could also be other world as in Michelle Yeoh and Kihei Kwan crashing through your ceiling and telling you, you have to fight a bull demon. Hi, my name is Ben Wong and I play Jin Wong. And my name is Sydney Taylor. I play Amelia Taylor. Hi, I'm Daniel Wu and I play Sun Wukong, Monkey King. Hi, I'm Yan Yan. I'm, I play the role Christine Wong. And I'm Chun Han and I play Simon Wong. I'm Jin Lun Yang. I'm the author of the graphic novel that the series is based on. And I'm also an executive producer. What's going on? I'm not from this world. I need your help with my quest to stop the uprising. The gate between Earth and Heaven is opening. Okay! You must stop it or everyone will perish. The fate of your world hangs in the balance. I don't really see how I fit into this whole thing. You're my guide. Can we come up with something a little bit cooler than guide? Servant? Yeah, no, you're right. Guide's better. We have the same last names as our characters, but it wasn't on Just purpose. Coincidence. Yeah. Hmm, I'm a little suspicious now, but we'll I know. Talk to Kelvin about it. It wasn't our fault. Yeah, we'll figure it out. I'll figure this. I'll do some research on this. So, um, the series itself is like pretty much like even with all the fantastical elements, it's all about like coming of age and stuff like that. Even with the fighting monsters and gods. So I guess like I want I wanted to know what do you guys want younger audiences to take from this series? Um. Yeah, like you said, you know, there are fantastical elements, but it's still just grounded in this coming of age story about Jin, right? And this family story about his his parents and, and him and, and them sort of learning to live and grow up in, in America. So um that I think is the most important message, is a message about about what it is to to be um a teen in America who also on top of it has to deal with other worlds. And those other worlds might be other worlds culturally. Like, you know, you feeling like you have to be two different people when you're with your parents and when you're at school, but it could also be other world as in Michelle Yeoh and Kihei Kwan crashing through your ceiling and telling you, you have to fight a bull demon. Um, it's a great metaphor in that way. Right. Um, and also, I hope people are entertained. I hope people have fun. Because I think if they have fun, then all of those themes and, and lessons are going to get absorbed naturally. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> I, I, I feel like you covered all the bases. I, I should have left some for you. Sorry, sorry. No, I think that... I, I hope that teenagers nowadays feel, when they watch the show, some sort of relatability in whatever way that is if they feel like they are an amalgamation of worlds crashing together or if they feel lonely or if they feel like they don't have friends that they can be themselves around or they feel like they don't know how to grow up it it's it, the show has all of that and i hope that when they see it they they feel seen and understood and yeah. in, in whatever way that they need to right you know and less lonely about their less own experiences lonely. Oh, I, I would love, uh, you know, at any point in time, I mean, we've all been kids or we've all been teenagers uh, growing up. The, the, we've all gone through the awkwardness of that phase and then the discomfort and the feeling of being an outsider. I just, I, I would love for, for kids watching, you know, anyone feeling that way to know that they're not alone and that, you know, that there there's a place for them here in this world or in the mythological world too. Yeah. Your parents wanted to tell you it's okay. It's okay. It just it do take some time for us to do that. So it's okay. Oh, <laughs> 孩子有自己的路，让他去吧。观音菩萨是我之言，但是他是我的儿子。What was it the, the experience of bringing such an integral, like Chinese myth or legend, to Western audiences with, through the series? Uh, it was really cool. It was daunting at first because there's a couple aspects. Like there is the fact that 
everybody in Asia grew up with this iconic character and they know this character inside and out. And then you're dealing with some audiences who's probably never seen this character at all before. So how do you speak to that audience that knows him inside and out? And how do you present a kind of a new version that's relatable to a Western audience? And I think that was the biggest challenge. Um, and in this story, what was a departure from the main kind of journey to the West story is that this is not the young, uh, rambunctious Sun Wukong that we normally see, but this is a more mature father with a son who's acting a lot like him when he was younger. And so he's dealing with that reality of like, my son is a lot like me and I don't like it. And I don't want, I don't want him to be that way. Right. Um, and so really for me, it was trying to find that universal theme that everybody could relate to, which was being the trials and tribulations of being a parent and trying to raise a kid in these days. Right. Um, and how you could, if that came across, then it brings this really mythological abstract character and grounds him to reality. And then it also mirrors the character between Chin Han and Ben Wong's character and the kind of father-son relationship that they have as well. And so all of those things were kind of pieces of the recipe to make this character new and fresh, relatable to people who know him, but also understandable to people who don't know him at all. Okay, I have some fun questions for you. Um, sure. Since you worked with a lot of younger um, actors in this one, did you learn any cool Gen Z slang or trends while on set? Oh. Um, uh, I don't think I learned any slang. I'm so bad with that kind of stuff. But um, hanging out with these kids and like, you know, the fact that they have to have boba like every 10 minutes and all that kind of stuff. Um, I didn't grow up with boba. It's kind of newer to me, right? Um, that's an interesting aspect that they really literally need an IV of boba to survive, um, is, is interesting. Um, and then the slang, well, what was interesting was seeing the relationship between Ben and Jimmy and Sydney, the three of them and how like Jimmy's from a totally different world. He grew up in Taiwan and he's Taiwanese and doesn't know America. It was the first time he'd been in America and first time working here and him coming and joining this group and being finding his way within them was kind of beautiful to watch. I mean, this is outside of filming, right? And then then it translated onto screen because their chemistry on screen is so amazing. Um, but to see all that happen and to see this kind of cultural exchange and see that like these kids, they're just kids and it doesn't matter where they're from, they're gonna find a way to connect and that there isn't divisions. We make divisions and that these kids, like they found their way to see each other eye to eye and become best of friends. And it was kind of a beautiful thing to experience. So, uh, what's going on? Hi, you're welcome. I didn't want to meet you here. Oh, uh, so sorry, but, but I, my Chinese isn't super good. Oh. Uh, well, this is Wayne Chang. Wei Chen. He's a new student and he's Chinese, like you. Uh, okay. I thought that you could show him around since you two have so much in common. Uh, we do? So for the rest of the day, he's going to be your shadow. Sorry, my what? It's been 17 years since the publication of American Born Chinese. What were some main points that you wanted to keep? And what themes of being Chinese American or Asian American did you want it that has changed since then and you wanted to put in within the series? Yeah, that, that's a that's a great question. The, the core of the story, both in the book and also in the series, it's about a young man, a young Chinese American boy who um, is finding his place in the world. And, and he feels a, a, a lack of confidence because he's a Chinese American. And the story is about kind of how he works through that, through a friendship that he has with um, uh, an immigrant kid who happens to be not just an immigrant from Asia, but an immigrant from mythological Asia, you know, uh, that we wanted to keep. As for what changed, uh, one of the big changes we made was we made a decision early on that the book was going to be, the book was set in like this vague 80s and 90s timeline. We wanted the series to be set now in the 2020s. And the, the discussion about Asian Americans has changed from then until now. So I feel like Kelvin and his, Kelvin Yu, the showrunner, and his writing team, they just did this brilliant job of addressing that. A, a stellar example of that is in episode two, when there's this protest, you know, around um, Asian American issues that happens on campus. That sort of protest would never have happened in the 80s and 90s, but it would definitely happen today. You know, people love this. It's good for you. Right, this one looks like it's giving me the thumbs up. <laughs> I really enjoyed the storyline between the parents. I felt it was very nuanced. And like, how did it feel giving me such like a, a different look at immigrant parents a lot of times that we see? I'm honored. Mm -hmm. 
I'm honored to do that. And um, thank you to the creative team. I mean, showrunner, our scriptwriters, they are doing, a, you know, is a very human base uh, character instead of a caricature or, yeah. you know. So I think it is fantastic to be able to be such a um, layered character in a, in a series. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You get to see all the different sides of the, the, the characters, you know, mm -hmm. not just the, not just the, the noble sides of them, but also, you know, all the, all the less uh, possibly admirable qualities. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in, the, in a word, I mean, they're, they're all very human. And I think ultimately we would love for, for the audience to be able to see themselves in, in them. What some inspirations did you take for the father and son relationship within the series? Um, I think my biggest inspiration was like through life um, because I'm a father of a child who's nine years old. Um, she's now figuring out her identity and it's real strong. Um, and I have to deal with that. And, you know, there's some aspects of it that I don't like and, and I try to, you know, form her in a way that I think is better. But sometimes you just got to let go and let her be that way and let her develop on her own, let her make her own mistakes. And so I think those life lessons, I think if I wasn't a father, I don't think I would understand this character as much. But because I'm going through it and I've been going through it for the past nine years, like it was very relatable to me. And that's kind of where I saw kind of the universal experience of, of this character and how to play him. It will be difficult and dangerous. Are you taking your role? What if I'm not, though? Fate is not decided up there, but down here. So freaking unbelievable. Everything is more connected than you think. Huh? Yay.